I used to work at Target a couple of years ago. I worked inside the store on the sales floor, mainly on the grocery side. During this time, I was a part-time employee and I worked around 20 to 30 hours a week. One night, I was working my usual shift from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. At the beginning of my shift, things were quite busy. I would move around one side of the store, primarily stocking shelves or organizing items. I also helped customers by answering their questions and directing them to specific items they were looking for. By this point, I had been working there for about six months and I knew the store inside out. Now let's fast forward to around 9.30 p.m. that night. The store had become very quiet. Although we were open until 11 p.m., it was exceptionally calm. Many of my coworkers had already left and the overnight team was starting to arrive. On the grocery side, however, it remained relatively busy as it tended to have more shoppers, requiring more attention. All Target employees carried walkie-talkies for communication. I heard someone call my name on the walkie-talkie, so I responded. I wasn't sure who it was, but they instructed me to switch to the next channel, so I did. It was common for people to contact me on the walkie-talkie throughout the night usually for various reasons, such as taking a break or needing assistance in another section of the store. As I switched to the next channel and announced my presence, I heard nothing at first. Then, after a few seconds, I heard this eerie and unsettling laugh. It just continued, and I spoke up again, asking who it was that was talking to me. There was no response, only more of that eerie laughter. I asked once more, growing suspicious that it might be some sort of prank. Then they stopped laughing and said my name. It was a man speaking in a very deep voice, almost as if he was trying to disguise it. He mentioned that he was waiting for me in the parking lot. I chuckled a bit, assuming it was someone just messing around especially since most of us were wrapping up our shifts. Still, I couldn't figure out who it was. I continued working, and soon enough, I was finished and able to clock out. I headed into the employee-only area to grab my belongings, and then proceeded to leave the store. The parking lot was exceptionally quiet. Most of the cars belonged to employees and were parked towards the center. My car was situated near the back corner. Earlier in the evening, it had been bustling with activity. But as I walked out to my car, I noticed another vehicle parked near mine. It was a few rows over and to the left, at least 100 feet away, but its engine was running. Initially, I didn't think much of it. However, I soon realized that the car was starting to drive in my direction. I didn't recognize it as belonging to anyone I knew. It quickly closed the distance, and I got inside my car, locking the doors. The other car then parked in the space next to mine, but facing the opposite direction. I tried to glance over, but the window was heavily tinted, making it impossible to see inside. At that moment, I remembered the unsettling message I received on the walkie-talkie. It wasn't a joke. I had a sinking feeling about the situation, but I decided that my best course of action was to drive home and hope that the person wouldn't follow me. As soon as I began to pull away, the other car started up and turned around. It became clear that I was being followed. I quickly changed my mind and headed back towards the Target store. I didn't want this unknown person tailing me to my home. I parked my car closer to the front and middle of the parking lot, where most of the other cars were. I nestled my vehicle between two others that were already parked. The car that had been following me drew closer, but then parked across and a little ways back. It was now about 50 feet away from me. I got out of my car 
and walked briskly towards the entrance of Target. I glanced back briefly and noticed that the car was still running, but no one had exited it. This offered me some relief. Once I made it inside Target, I spotted one of my co-workers whom I knew. I quickly shared what had just happened with him. We both decided to check if the suspicious car was still there. As we reached the entrance doors and peered outside, we saw the car. We watched it intently. And then something surprising occurred. It pulled out of the parking space it had backed into. Now, it finally seemed like the car had left. I returned to my own car and started the engine, backing out of my parking spot. But as I began to drive down the usual route I took when leaving, I noticed a car in the far distance, coming from the corner of the parking lot opposite to me. It was heading in my direction, and I had a strong suspicion it was the same car. I panicked and swiftly turned my car to face the opposite direction. The other car was still quite far from me, but it was steadily approaching. I quickly drove out of the less used back exit of Target, which led to a quieter road behind a nearby sporting goods store. I circled the sporting goods store's parking lot and parked on its side, knowing that the car following me would have no way of knowing where I had gone. It probably assumed I was attempting to get back on the highway. I waited there, hoping not to see headlights coming around the corner. Several nerve-wracking minutes passed, but thankfully, I didn't spot any signs of the pursuing car. Finally, I felt safe enough to leave and head home. After that unsettling experience, nothing similar occurred while I was working at Target. I couldn't identify who had been talking to me that night on the walkie-talkie. While it was possible for someone to access our frequency, even from the parking lot, I couldn't fathom why someone would do that. However, I did have another strange and creepy encounter during a recent visit to Target a few weeks ago. On this occasion, I went shopping for a few items, as I frequently did. As I was wandering around the store, I found myself in one of the far back corners. It was quiet there, as it was around 8.30 p.m., and there weren't many shoppers left. Out of nowhere, a guy appeared, coming around the corner from the next aisle. I realized he was a Target employee, with dark brown hair and a somewhat tall stature, maybe around six feet. He greeted me and asked if I needed any assistance in finding something. I politely declined, explaining that I knew where everything I needed was, but I appreciated the offer. He then suggested showing me some items that were on sale, which I also declined. He seemed understanding and simply walked away. There was nothing particularly strange about the interaction, but it left me feeling uneasy. I continued my shopping for about 15 more minutes, then headed to the checkouts, paid for my items, and left. My car was parked toward one side of the store, about halfway back in the parking lot. As I was unloading my purchases into the trunk, almost out of nowhere. Conversation. I noticed a sudden shift in Ed's demeanor. He started making inappropriate comments and advancing the conversation into an uncomfortable territory. I was taken aback and tried to steer the conversation back to a more neutral and work-related topic. However, Ed persisted in making unwelcome advances and continued with his inappropriate remarks. I felt increasingly uncomfortable and knew I needed to put a stop to it. I firmly told him that I wasn't interested in that kind of conversation and that it was inappropriate for the workplace. He seemed taken aback by my response, but eventually left the break room. I decided to report the incident to my supervisor and the store manager. They took my complaint seriously and assured me they would address the issue. I didn't have any further issues with Ed after that, and I appreciated that the store management took action 
to maintain a safe and respectful working environment. Despite this unpleasant encounter, I generally enjoyed my time working at Target. I had good relationships with most of my coworkers and found the job to be satisfying. Target attracts a mix of employees, and while most are friendly and professional, there can be occasional situations like the one with Ed. It's crucial to address such issues promptly to maintain a positive work atmosphere. Lived, I hadn't given him my address, and I hadn't even agreed to him coming over. Panic set in as I realized this was a potentially dangerous situation. I quickly responded, telling him that he had no right to come to my house and that I hadn't invited him. I asked him to leave immediately. My hands were trembling as I typed those words, and I was becoming increasingly frightened. Ed's response was unsettling. He didn't apologize or offer an explanation. Instead, he sent another text saying, I just wanted to see you. This only heightened my fear, as it was clear that he had crossed boundaries and didn't respect my boundaries or consent. I immediately called the police to report the situation, explaining the circumstances and expressing my concerns for my safety. They advised me to lock all doors and windows, stay inside, and not engage with Ed any further. They dispatched an officer to my location. While I waited for the police to arrive, I texted Ed one final time, telling him that I had contacted the authorities and that he needed to leave immediately. I also informed him that I had shared his messages and information with the police. Thankfully, the police arrived quickly and they took my report seriously. They were able to track down Ed, who was still in the vicinity, and they questioned him about his actions. They didn't disclose all the details to me, but they assured me that they had handled the situation and that Ed would not be bothering me again. After that incident, I took extra precautions to ensure my safety, such as changing my locks and being more cautious about sharing personal information. It was a frightening experience, but I was grateful for the swift response from the police and their efforts to protect me. This encounter with Ed served as a stark reminder of the importance of personal boundaries and safety. It's crucial to trust your instincts and take action when you feel threatened or uncomfortable, just as I did by contacting the authorities. Live Live, was he really at my house? I started to text back, but didn't know what to say. I went over to my door and looked out the peephole into the hallway. Nobody was there. Maybe he was at my apartment, but not in the building yet. I looked out of my back window as well and didn't see anything. I hoped that he wasn't actually there, but it was a really strange thing to say if he wasn't. Finally, I texted back, telling Ed that I wasn't at home. I thought that maybe that would make him leave if he was here, or deter him from coming over if he wasn't. But he responded by saying, Yes, you are home. I saw you. When I read that text, I started looking around like a paranoid person. My mind was racing, and I was thinking crazy thoughts. Like, maybe he was already inside my apartment, hiding under my bed or something he wasn't. I looked in all of my rooms. I then texted him back, asking him where he was. He responded by saying, at my house. I was confused by this and looked out of the peephole and windows again without seeing him. I started to think that maybe he was just joking. At least that's what I was trying to convince myself. I went back over to my peephole again and looked out of it for like a minute straight. But still, nobody was there. I turned around, and then I saw him. He was standing on my patio, right outside my sliding door and looking in. I screamed like crazy, 
and then ran from my bedroom. I locked myself inside it and then called the police. A few moments later, I heard a knocking on my sliding door. I got another text from Ed, telling me to let him in and asking me why I screamed. I ignored it and I told the 911 dispatcher about the situation and they assured me that an officer would be there shortly. Ed then tried calling me repeatedly, but I didn't answer and chose to ignore his calls. He also sent me several more text messages, but I put my phone down because I didn't even want to look at it. It was then that I started to hear a loud banging coming from my sliding door. He really wanted me to let him in. This went on for the next several minutes and it honestly felt like forever. Finally, the police arrived. I heard Ed talking with them loudly, and I left the bathroom. I soon saw him talking with the officers, and they eventually convinced him to leave. Then I spoke with the officers and told my side of the story. Ed ended up getting trespassed from my apartment's property, and he was warned not to come back. Luckily, I haven't seen or heard from him since then. I blocked his number and took precautions to ensure my safety. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. Another scary incident happened to me at a Target store last year. I had gone there one night for some normal grocery shopping. There's a Target not far from where I live, and I visit it almost weekly. I arrived at the store sometime at night, went inside, grabbed a cart, and started filling it with items. I must have been inside the store for about 20 minutes, shopping as usual. Finally, I checked out and left the store. I headed back to my car, which was parked not even that far away. However, when I reached my vehicle, a pretty normal sedan, something unsettling happened. I was behind the car, about to go around to put the groceries in the back seat. When I saw somebody looking at me through the back window from inside my car, it was a man, and I didn't get a good look at him because he quickly ducked down less than a second after I spotted him. I immediately panicked and left the shopping cart behind, sprinting back inside the Target store. Once I was safely inside, I dialed 911 to call the police and reported that someone had been inside my car at the Target parking lot. I waited inside the store for the police to arrive, which took probably less than five minutes. During this time, while waiting for the police, I stood just inside the Target store, near the first aisle, anxiously hoping that they would arrive soon to address this frightening situation. I continued waiting for the police, and I was fairly certain that I had seen the same guy who had been in my car entered the store. He walked to the right and didn't seem to notice me. While I wasn't completely certain, given the brief glimpse I had of him inside my car, I was probably about 80% sure it was him. To be safe, I decided to go down one of the aisles in case he was looking for me or something. Not long after, the police arrived. I went outside with them and we checked my vehicle. Whoever had been inside it was now gone, but I noticed that all my car doors were unlocked. It must have slipped my mind to lock them when I went inside Target. Fortunately, I didn't have anything valuable or important inside my car, as I typically kept it empty and clean. Nevertheless, it was unsettling to think that a random man had been inside my vehicle. I provided the police with a description of the man and informed them that I thought I had seen him inside Target. I emphasized that I couldn't be 100% certain, but I was pretty confident it was the same person, especially since he wasn't in my car anymore. The man had dark hair, was of short stature, and was wearing a tan t-shirt and jeans. He also appeared to be relatively young, probably in his 20s or early 30s. The police told me they would go back into Target to see if they could locate the man. 
I stayed by my car, speaking with another officer for another five or ten minutes. Another officer eventually returned and informed me that they didn't find the man inside Target and assumed he had left. They said they would make one more pass through the store and I could choose to go home if I wished. At that point, I decided to leave and drove home. The Target. I usually visit is near several other stores and my exit path involves driving down the road to the side of Target, leading to a quieter road with more stores about a quarter of a mile away. As I was driving down that road, I noticed the same guy randomly walking alongside it. It struck me as odd since there was no sidewalk and the area wasn't well lit, making it an unusual place to see someone walking. Just seconds later, going on, as I approached, the man's aggression was palpable. Tim and Chloe explained that he had been harassing Chloe and following her around the store. The man vehemently denied these accusations and continued to shout. I tried to maintain a calm demeanor and asked the man to explain his side of the story. He was defensive and claimed he was innocent, but his behavior was making the situation tense. Chloe reiterated her discomfort and concern about the man's behavior. At this point, I realized that I needed to defuse the situation and ensure the safety and comfort of my team member. I calmly informed the man that we took such matters seriously and that we would review security footage to assess the situation objectively. This seemed to calm him down momentarily and he agreed to wait while we checked the footage. As I walked away to check the security cameras, I discreetly asked Tim to stay with Chloe to ensure she felt supported and safe. I reviewed the footage and it became clear that the man had indeed been following Chloe around the store. It was important to have clear evidence to address the situation appropriately. Upon returning to the aisle, I informed the man that we had reviewed the security footage, which confirmed Chloe's account. I explained that such behavior was not tolerated in our store and that he would have to leave. He protested initially, but eventually complied, leaving the store while continuing to maintain his innocence. I made sure Chloe felt supported and offered her any assistance she needed. After the incident, I followed up with my team members, emphasizing the importance of their safety and the company's commitment to addressing harassment or threatening behavior. Thankfully, we didn't encounter any further issues with that particular individual. Despite the occasional challenging situations, I continued to work at Target, knowing that incidents like this were rare and our store maintained a strong commitment to the safety and well-being of both guests and team members. Saw a car speeding around the parking lot recklessly, as reported. I immediately contacted the store's security personnel to alert them about the situation and asked them to monitor the vehicle's movements from the surveillance cameras. As we watched, the car continued to speed dangerously, posing a significant risk to customers and pedestrians in the parking lot. I decided to take action to ensure everyone's safety. I instructed the cart attendant to call the police and report the reckless driving while I made an announcement over the store's intercom system, asking all customers and team members to stay clear of the parking lot due to a dangerous situation. The announcement caught the attention of many customers and they began looking out the store's windows to see what was happening. The car's reckless behavior continued for a few more minutes, but then I saw flashing police lights approaching the parking lot. I informed the cart attendant and he updated the police on the situation. The police arrived quickly 
had intercepted the speeding vehicle. They conducted a traffic stop, and I observed from the store's entrance as they questioned the driver and assessed the situation. It turned out that the driver had been driving under the influence of alcohol and was subsequently arrested. With the situation resolved, I made another announcement, thanking our customers and team members for their cooperation and informing them that it was safe to return to the parking lot. I also updated Chloe and Tim on the situation as it had unfolded quickly. Reflecting on the events of that evening, it was clear that it had been quite eventful, with both a disruptive customer and a dangerous situation in the parking lot. However, I was grateful that the store's team and security measures had helped ensure everyone's safety and that both incidents were handled effectively. Despite the occasional challenges and disruptions, working at Target provided valuable experiences in managing unexpected situations and ensuring the safety and satisfaction of both customers and team members. It must have been a chaotic and unsettling experience to witness that reckless driver in the Target parking lot. Your quick thinking in calling the police and taking steps to ensure the safety of store guests and team members was commendable. It's fortunate that the incident occurred late at night when fewer people were present, reducing the risk of harm. The fact that the reckless driver turned out to be the same individual who had been following Chloe around the store earlier in the evening is certainly surprising and raises concerns about his intentions and state of mind. The police's prompt response and apprehension of the individual were crucial in preventing further harm or accidents. It's essential to prioritize safety and take swift action when faced with such situations. And your actions in handling both the disruptive customer and the reckless driver demonstrated your dedication to ensuring a safe environment for everyone at the store. These experiences highlight the importance of vigilance and the ability to respond effectively in unexpected and potentially dangerous situations.